Hey everyone, Simon here. Uh, today we're going to cover chapter one of the Brihat Parashara Hora Shastra. And um, the verse begins, the book begins like this with an opening prayer. Om Gajananam Bhutagana Disevitam Kapita Jambu Palasara Bhakshanam Umasutam Shoka Venashakaranam Namami Vigni Swarapada Pankajam. So this is a prayer to Ganesha, who um, there is a lot to say in this uh, in this verse, but before we go into that. Uh, let's just discuss um, a little bit about um, my orientation in coming into this and uh, why I'm doing it and why I'm putting these out. Uh, my goal is to help students learn from these sacred texts. And they are sacred because Parashara, the great sage Parashara, is also a Rishi. He is um, one of the authors, one of the singers of the hymns in the Rig Veda. He's a fully enlightened human being. And so his words have weight, they have meaning. And so um, the way this begins, actually, it says, Om Shri Ganeshaya Namaha Atta Brihat Parashara Hora Shastram. So the name Parashara is the name of the man. Parashara is what comes out of the man, It what is descendant of the man. So in one sense, his son, Vyasa, is Parashara, that which came from Parashara. But also this text is the child of Parashara. So it is Parashara, Hora Shastra. Hora means the astrology of natal charts, natal astrology. Shastra is the, uh, Shas means to instruct, to teach. So the teachings, the instruction uh, of uh, from, uh, of Parashara on natal astrology. So the prayer, Gajananam, he who has the uh, face of an elephant, um, who is Bhuta Ganadi Sevita, who is served or worshipped by or surrounded by Bhuta Gana. Okay, so here it's translated as the five great elements of the universe. Okay, that's maybe one. That is one interpretation, but the Ganas and the Bhutas are the people who hang around Shiva, his father. So Ganesha's father is Shiva, and he likes to sit in graveyards. You know Shiva, the great yogi who has a, a cobra as a necktie, and the half, uh, uh, the fourteenth uh, phase of the moon over his head. So the moon that is a very crescent moon like this, it is Chaturdashi, the 14th of the dark phase, just before it's a new moon. That day, every month, in fact, is called Shiva Ratri, the night, actually, the Ratri of Shiva is on the 14th day of the waning moon. So when the moon is about to go new, every month, that's the uh, night of Shiva. There is a Maha Shivratri, usually sometime in February, which is the great night of Shiva. One, one of these a year that's celebrated by doing Shiva Upasana, uh, like Maha Mrityunjaya Mantra, Om Dhrambakam Yajamahe, and not sleeping. And sometimes people do Bhang, which is a mixture of, you know, marijuana and milk and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that is uh, Ganesha's father, and he's surrounded by Bhutas. What are Bhutas? Literally, the word Bhuta means has been. So Bhuta literally means has been. So it's a has been person or a ghost. So a person who has had a life, an entity that has had a life on this planet and is now, for whatever reason, hanging around. That is one meaning of the word Bhuta. Bhuta is something that has been in the sense that it's been recycled. So uh, a chair, when you burn it, it's reduced down to its elements, to the ash, and that's Bhuta. And in fact, um, my teacher and his teacher before him, when they began 
the study of astrology, they, be, they began by doing something called Bhuta Shuddhi, which is cleansing of the elements. So Bhuta Shuddhi, um, which is a tantric technique. And, and Jyotisha is very intimately interwoven with Tantra, not the kind of Tantra that they teach in Los Angeles that's about, you know, <laughs> prolonging your orgasm, but the kind of Tantra that is taught in secret schools in Vedic traditions, which is about being able to connect to the elements and being able to digest any experience. So, but it begins with Bhuta Shuddhi. Bhuta Shuddhi begins with a 40 days milk fast. And so my teacher, his teacher before him and other students whom I know, before they began to study Ayurveda, before they began to study Jyotisha, they did 40 days of milk fast. Oh, but I'm allergic. I'm lactose intolerant. No. The way this milk is administered is it's heated, it's prepared with special spices, and it's given to you while you sit in a room and do nothing. You basically learn to sit and you cleanse your body so that you become sattvic and you cleanse the five elements. So this is part of a traditional setup for a student who's beginning astrology. And this is why we invoke Ganesha. Why? Who is Bhuta Ganadi Sevitam. He is uh, served by the Bhutas by the, by the, and the Ganas. Now, what is a Gana? Gana is also a class of being. Gana literally means class. Okay? A class of being a class of knowledge, etc. Now, what does this have to do with us? Well, the gana means also to count. Sangarnakam is the word for a computer. A computer is a sangarnakam, which counts everything, like a calculator, right? Gana has to do with math and counting, but in this sense, it has to do, so it has to do with calculating the horoscope calculating, um, uh, being able to, to be accurate in your calculations, number one. And then also, Garna has to do with the class of knowledge, which are invoked in, in just a little bit. The, wh what is that knowledge? Hor the Horary Astrology, Muhurta, the different branches of Jyotisha. So Ganesha is the Lord of all of them. He is Bhuta Ganadi Sevita. So Gana Isha, in fact, is the Lord of the Ganas, the Lord of all categories, the Lord of all forms of knowledge. So he is invoked first because he is the patron of all learning. Yes, the goddess Saraswati is as well, but um, Gana Isha, the Lord of counting, the Lord of calculation, the Lord of knowledge, uh, by extension. Okay? So Bhuta Shuddhi is part of Tantra, which means to die. You become Bhuta. Bhuta is that which has been. And you do that through sex, but you also do that through personal revolution, where you die unto yourself. Now, I know this sounds all kind of weird, talking about a text on astrology, but folks, these, these prayers, these rishis, they brought together different forms of learning including Ayurveda and Vastu. Uh, <clears throat> Parashara does talk about uh, certain planets causing, you know, uh, Rajas, Tamas disorders, uh, Pitta and Kapha disorders. So these forms of knowledge are all inter intertwined. Um, so Gana has to do with all the forms of knowledge that require adding and subtracting. Okay? And... Uh, you know, in, in Vedic astrology, Ketu is often associated with Ganesha. Ketu. Okay? And Ketu has to do with Bhutas. Bhuta is that which has been. The, the dead uh, or, or things that are secret. Ghosts. Also, Ketu has to do with unfulfilled desires and disappointment. One way to understand Ketu is wherever Ketu sits in your chart, he creates disappointment in that area of your life. If you have K2 and Venus together in your chart, you're going to be chronically disappointed in relationships, in love. If you have K2 Mars together in your chart, you're going to be chronically disappointed by the act, 
you, you, the physical experience of being in a body. There's going to be anger. There's going to be... Uh, so this is actually a great combo for yoga teachers, for martial artists who spiritualize movement, physical movement. K2 Venus is great for tantrics because it spiritualizes relationships or a relationship counselor. Um, then K2 Moon is chronic disappointment in the mother or in your ex somehow you didn't receive nourishment from the mother and so forth. So K2 rules disappointment and K2 rules unfulfilled desires. So K2 we worship Ganesha when we have a K2 problem because K2 helps remove the obstacles to uh, obtaining those desires. And um, <clears throat> so, for example, one of the upayas, and this is a top secret upaya, but I'm, I guess it's not top secret anymore uh, because I'm sharing it with you. And I'm sharing it in the spirit of knowledge and understanding, not... Um, a little bit later, Parashara talks about to whom this kind of knowledge should be given. And anyway, I hope you use it in the right way. But so uh, one of the remedies for K2, because K2 also means flag or comet, is to get a flag from a temple, particularly a Ganesha temple, if possible. Now, in South India, they don't fly flags, but in North India, they do. And so you, you would go to a temple in North India and ask the pundit for the flag from the top of the temple. Um, and keep that and, and revere it. Keep it on your altar as a remedy for a K2 disorder, if, if you should have one in your chart. So Bhuta Ganadi Sevitam, there's a lot packed into this because it describes Ganesha as the Lord of the ghosts, as the Lord of those disappointments and those has been the desires that you've had from a past life Bhuta means has been so it means something you're you're in this life you still yet to fulfill that's coming still from a past life if you don't believe in past lives then it's you've inherited from your parents it, it's genetic you've inherited some kind of uh, uh, something that hasn't been fulfilled yet and it's your job to fulfill it so uh, Ganesha helps you to do that. What else helps is doing Bhuta Shuddhi, meaning cleansing the five elements um, before beginning the study of any kind of astrology. So, <clears throat> uh, yeah, so Shiva is his dad. Then Kapita Jambu Pala Sara Bhakshanam, he eats the Sara, the, the juice of the Kapita Jambu fruit. Uh, Uma Sutam, he's the, the son of Uma Shoka Vinashakaranam. He's the cause of the destruction of all sorrow. Namami Vigneshwara. I, I bow to Vigna Ishwara, the Lord of all obstacles, Pada Pankajam, to his lotus feet. Okay, so that's the invocation. Uh, if you have any questions, you can put them in the uh, box below. So let's get going with the verse now. So the first verse uh, says, if I could pull it up here, one minute. Srishti Krama Katana Adhyaya. The, the Adhyaya, the chapter of the telling of the process of creation. Okay. So that's chapter one. And it begins. Om <clears throat> Ataikada Munishreshtam tris, uh, Trikalagnyam Parasharam Papracho Petya Maitreya Pranipatya Kritanjalihi. So, this is beautiful. So, Maitreya. Maitreya is the name of the student who is approaching who? Parashara. So, Maitreya is approaching. But the words they use are upetya. Uh, pranipatya means, well, we'll get to pranipatya. Upetya, pa pracha upetya, means approaching near that sage, but it doesn't just mean walking up to him. The, the word upanishad literally means to sit near. Upanishad. Upanishad means 
to sit near or to sit near or at the feet of the master. And so an Upanishad is, uh, you know, it's the Vedanta, it's the end of the Veda when the teacher is explaining the meaning of the Veda. So there, this has a similar meaning. So Maitreya is coming to the feet of Parashara. How do we know that? It says Pranipatya. Pat means to fall. Nipat means to fall down. Pranipat means to fall down and forward. Literally, to prostrate yourself. How? Kritanjali, with folded hands. So Maitreya approaches Parashara prostates it, touches his feet and with his hands in a namaste, in a kritanjali, and forward on the ground. And who does he approach? Parashara. Who is Parashara? He is Muni Shreshtam. He's the best of sages. He is the elite of the elite. He's the Michael Jordan of, <laughs> of the spiritual people. Who is he also? Trikalagnyam. Now, the translation will tell you. Let's see what the translation says. And again, this is why I'm doing this, because the translation does not give you the full juice of it. It says the all-knowing sage, offering his obeisance. Okay. Well, no, it means falling at the feet, approaching and, and falling at the feet of not the all-knowing, but trikalagnya, the knower of past present, and future. Trikala. Ganesha is also said to be Trikalagnya. In the Ganapati Atarva Shirsham, the, one of the great, great mantras for Ganesha called Ganapati Atarva Shirsham. Um, he is Trikala, Vimuchyate. He is freed, a person who worships Ganesh is freed from the three times, past, present, and future, from the, you know, from the attachment, the sorrow, from those three. Anyway, Parashara is Trikalagnyam, the knower of past, present, and future. And when does this happen? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it happens now. Atta. This is the big Atta pronouncement that a sacred text begins, often begins, some sacred texts, I should say, begin with this because it means now. Same as the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. Let's begin with, name it, you know this, you guys. Atta Yoga Nushasanam. Now begins the study of yoga. Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirodha Tadadrashtu Svarupe Vasthanam Vritti Sarupya Mitaratra. Right? This is the Yoga uh, uh, the, uh, the Yoga Sutras. These are the Jyotisha Sutras and they begin with Atta. Why is that important? Because it means the moment you interface with this is the moment it, it becomes alive. But to make it into a story, he also says Ekada. Ekada means once. <laughs> once upon a time. So is is the author being funny? He says, once upon a time now, Maitreya approached and bowed down to Parashara, the knower of past, present, and future, the great Michael Jordan of sages, <laughs> with folded hands. Well, yes, it is once upon a time and it is now. And, um, and it's intended to convey that sense of we don't know when it happened. Even at the time it was written down, they didn't know, was it five years ago? Was it 5,000 years ago? Ekada, once upon a time, in the far past. Atta, now. <laughs> so, you know, uh, it's like a father telling a story. Now, son, once upon a time, there was a sage. But it still begins with the word now. Do you get it? Then, what does Maitreya say? Now, Maitreya is a very special name. Uh, before I get into what he says, Maitreya is means the friend of all. It it comes from the word Mitra, which means friend. So it means descending from Mitra, or having the qualities of Mitra. 
And so the point of Maitreya's existence is that he is a friend to all beings. Now, it could also mean he has his moon in which nakshatra? Yes, Anuradha. Why? Because the deity of Anuradha is Mitra nakshatra. But never mind that. Um, the reason Maitreya is approaching Parashara is to share this knowledge with the world. Okay? And it's because of him that we have all of this wonderful knowledge. So then he says, He Bhagavan, Paramam Punyam Guhyam Vedangam Uttamam, Triskandam Jyotisham Horaganitam Sanhite Ticha. He Bhagavan, a great being. Um, I want to know, he says this actually in the next verse, um, Shruyate Mune, Tvaya Shruyate. I want to hear from you the Paramam, the great Punyam, uh, the, uh, how does it translate it? The, that's good for, you know, for all beings. Guhyam, the secret, Vedanga Muttamam. Vedanga means limb of the Veda. So basically he's saying, I want to learn this limb of the Veda from you. There is a um, uh, there's a verse that says let me see, let me write it out here for you Vedangani Shadetani Shiksha Yakarna Tata Niruktam Jyotisham Kalpam Chando Vichitirityapi. So this is a, uh, a a verse that tells you what are the uh, limbs of the Vedas. So the Vedangas, they are Shad, they are six in number. Shiksha, uh, Vyakarana, so grammar, uh, then niruktam etymology, uh, grammar, uh, diction, etymology, a ritual, uh, chandas, and jyotisha, the eye of the Veda. Why is this important? Because Parashara uses the word eye of the Veda in, in a second. So let me uh, show you that. Okay, so he says this great Vedanga, Triskandam, which comes in three parts. That is Hora, which is natal astrology, Ganita, which is calculation, of which basically is astronomy, and Samhita. Samhita is the collected knowledge, the collected works of um, the histories. Eteshu apitrishu shreshta hora iti shruyate mune. It is said, O, o sage, hey sage, hey Bhagavan, it is said, it is heard rather, Shruyate, that Hora is the Shreshta, is the best among these three. Why? Oh, not why, but Tvatastam Shrotu Mechami Kripayavada Me Prabhu. That's what I want to learn from you. Please teach me, <laughs> tell me. Okay, then. Katam Srishteriyam Jata Jagat Jagatascha Leyaha Katam Kastanam Bhustitanam Cha Sambandam Vadas Vistarat. Wow. Man, this is going to be a long lecture because there's so much, guys, there's so much in this opening verses and most people don't even read this stuff um they just don't they go oh, okay yeah let's get to the yogas so um i want to know these three from you katam srishtihi iyam how does how is the world created jata jagata jagataha srishti how is the creation of the world how does it come about Leya how does it how does how does its destruction come about? Kustanam, those who live in space, meaning the planets. 
K means the sky. Sta means sitting in the sky. Those who live or are established in the sky and Bhu Stitanam, those who are established on earth. Sambandha. What is their Sambandha? What is their bond? Vistarat. In detail, please. Vada me. Tell me. Vada. See how it's translated here. So, among the said, Hora is more excellent. I desire to know of its glorious aspects from you. Please tell me, how is this universe created? How does it end? Yes. What is the relationship of the animals born on this earth? Well, no. All bhustita means everything on earth. Not just the animals. We, human beings. With kusta. Kustanam. With those who live in, on the, you know, with the heavenly bodies. That's correct. Please speak elaborately. Okay, so this is how it all begins. What is the relationship with the with the planets and with uh, the beings on Earth? That is the the genuine question. And the word that is used is sambanda, sambanda. Okay, sambanda is in Jyotisha. Sambanda happens in a number of ways. So for two planets to be sambanda, they can be conjunct or yukta they can be um, uh, uh, opposite so uh, opposite or aspecting each other so that's drishti they can be in mutual reception that is um, parivartana and actually parivartana is even stronger but let's, it doesn't matter, we'll put it here. Then they can be in a mutual aspect. Like, for example, when Mars aspects Saturn and Saturn aspects Mars. You get it? The special, mutual special aspect between two planets. Um, they can be, and then there can be a, a spe, uh, there's a kind of Sambandha that, that is taught, say, when, for an example, when planet, say, Jupiter is in Capricorn and it's aspected by Saturn, or Jupiter in Capricorn aspecting Saturn also creates a sambanda, meaning they don't have to be mutually aspecting in mutual reception, even if it's a one sided aspect, but the other planet has a sambanda by sign. That is also a sambanda. That is a very technical term that we use in Vedic astrology to determine which two planets are linked. Well, anyhow, he uses this term, sambandham. What is the, what binds the things on earth with the things in the sky? All right, so let's move on to verse number five or we're not going to get anywhere. So here we go. Sadhu prishtam tvaya vipra lokanu grahakarina. Very good question, my dear, <laughs> says Parashara. Lokanu grahakarina. Loka, the world. Anugraha, for the grace and, and the blessing of the world. Karina. So again, Maitreya. This is the name of the, the sage. So he truly has the good will of all beings in his heart when he asks this question. And Parashara recognizes it. He can read his heart. And so he said, I see that you are a friend of all. And probably he says, I see that you were born with your moon in Anuradha <laughs> or your Lagna in Anuradha. He knows. Uh, or something. Anyway, could I'm just messing around. That is not in the text. Never mind that. Uh, but he does say, Ataham Paramam Brahma Tatshaktim Bharatim punaha suryam natva grahapatim jagadutpati karanam vakshyami vedanayanam yata brahmam mukhachrutam. This is a long sentence that Parashara says, but he says, Sadhu Prishtam, well done. What is, then what does he say? Vakshyami, I will speak. What will I speak? 
Veda Nayanam, the eye of the Veda. Okay? So this is the limb. So he's answering Maitreya's question directly. Maitreya says, teach me that limb of the Vedas that is the most important. And Parashara says, yes, I will teach you. I will speak about it. Yatha means as or how Brahma Mukad Shrutam. As, just as I learned it from the mouth of the Creator. Whoa. Parashara learned it, Brahma Mukat, from the mouth of Brahma. Brahma Mukat Shrutam becomes Brahma Mukat Shrutam. Then, but first, what will I do? First, I will salute the great Brahma, the great creator, and his Shakti, Saraswati, Bharatim Punaha, Bharatim, who is. Uh, it's an interesting name for his Shakti, for Saraswati, is Bharati. She who is the, the patron saint of Bharata Desha, of India. See, this is not in the translation. He just says, I pray to Lord Brahma and Sri Saraswati. That's it. But Tat Shakti, his Shakti is Bharati, the goddess, the patron saint of what? Bharata Desha. Um, so anyway, then then I will uh, salute the sun, Suryam Natva Grahapatin, who is the lord of all the planets and the cause of this solar system, this universe. Okay, and then he breaks and he says something very important. And those of you who have listened up to this point, to this lecture, this is for you. It says. Shantaya Guru Bhaktaya Sarvada Satyavadine Astikaya Pradatavyam Tatashreyo Hyapapsyati Nadeyam Parishishyaya Nastikaya Shatayava Date Pratidinam Dukkam Jayate Natrasan Shayaha. Wow. He says, This knowledge should only be given to whom to shantaya the student who has peace in his or her heart guru bhaktaya the student who is devoted to the teacher and the study guru bhakta who honors the teacher when on mondays and fridays no between 2 to 4 p.m no Sarvada at all times. And what else do they do? Satyavadi. They speak truth. So, and, and what else? <laughs> they are astika. They are straight arrowed believers. They, they have faith. They are not there to go, yeah, but how do you know this astrology stuff really works? I mean, like, it doesn't really, like, it's weird. Like, I don't know. Like, how can you be sure? No, no, no. This is, an, this is not your student whom this science should be pradatavyam. Should, meaning in, in the Charaka Samhita, the great text on Ayurveda, it says the same thing. Don't, in fact, it even goes farther. It says, don't treat patients <laughs> who are Nastikas and who are not going to follow what you recommend because they'll give you a bad name. So, you know, John was very sick. He went to see Mr. Charaka. Mr. Charak did a perfect diagnosis, gave him, but John threw away the medicine and didn't follow the instructions. Then John died. All of John's family is not going to be mad at Mr. Charak because he was the doctor. You get it? So, and it will bring down not only Mr. Chudak's name, but Ayurveda's name. It's not his fault. He did his job. But the Chudaka Samhita, the great text, says, don't treat those kinds of patients. They'll give you a bad name. <laughs> and likewise, Parashara, from the beginning, he says, hey, this information is reserved only for those students who have these qualities. Because then what happens? Tataha, then Shreyaha, he, avapsyati, avapsyati. Wow, this is a big word, guys. Shreyaha. This is the word 
that Arjuna uses when he's begging Sri Krishna, please tell me what is good in this world. And Parashara says, hey, this is how good comes into the world, by teaching this to people who are fit for it. In fact, I pulled up this verse, and let's see if you can see it here, hopefully. Uh, yes, you can. It says, this is the famous verse, this is the whole reason for the Bhagavad Gita, because Arjuna says this with full devotion. He says, Karpanya dosho upahatasvabhavaha prachamitvam dharmasamudha chetaha yatshreyasyat nishchitam bruhitan me shishyaste ham shadimam tvam prapannam. So he says, Shadimam, teach me. Tvam prapannam, I have surrendered to you. In the same way Maitreya has offered himself to Parashara. What does he say? Shishya steham. I am aham tava shishyaha. I am your student. But what, what does he say? He says, prachami. I'm asking. Dharma samudha cheta. My mind is totally confused. Yat shreyaha syat. Okay, so this is kind of all combined. It says, yat shreya sya nishchita bruhitan me. But if you break it down, it's yat, what, shreyaha. Shreyaha means the ultimate good, syat, is or could be, but is. Yat shreyaha syat, what is the ultimate good? It's the same thing that Parashara says comes about when you teach this, he says, Tataha Shreyaha he up uh, of opsiti. then he obtains the ultimate good. But what happens if you don't? Nadeyam Parashishyaya. This should not be given to those who are not really good students, who are Nastika, who don't believe, you know, the, the doubters, and who are Shataya, who are just trying to get something out of you. Guys, you don't know how many times people email me or call me and say, Simon, Simon, you really need your help. And I'm like, okay, we'll schedule an appointment. No, 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 I please. Okay, so I talk to them on the phone. I spend an hour on the phone looking at the, and something in my heart is saying, don't do this, don't do this. It's not right. It doesn't feel right. And, you know, after an hour, I say, okay, well, I have to go, but, you know, just schedule a time and we can continue. He says, no, 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 I'm, I don't want to schedule. This, was, this wasn't very informative. Okay, bye. What? So they got your time. They sucked your time, right? These are time suckers and energy sucks. These people, Nastikas, Shatas. Now it's okay. We, well, we have them in every, every profession has it. You know, if you're a lawyer, people will try to ask you for advice. If you're a doctor, if you're a car mechanic, it doesn't matter. But the point here is that this knowledge should not be given to those who aren't sincere. And where there is a sincere question, there's, there's a, a right answer. Because the, the seed of the answer is in the question. If the question is deformed and it's a bad seed, you will not get the right answer as an astrologer. This I have learned from many years of practicing and trial and error, and it is true. My teachers taught me. I'm trying to convey it to you. Parashara is trying to convey it to his, to his student. Do not do this for people who aren't utterly sincere. In fact, Hart tells the story, Hart Defoe tells the story of Mantriji. One time someone came to him and said, hey, is this lady's child going to die? And he looked at the guy asking, and he realized the guy was asking just out of curiosity. There wasn't, he says, bring me the mother. Let her ask the question. Because with the Shakti, the sincerity of the mother, giving the energy of the question, without a doubt, the universe reciprocates with an equal and opposite amount of energy and Shakti to give the right answer. Okay, this is the law of cause and effect. This is, uh, you know, Newton's law of motion equal and opposite effect okay so and this is the, what parashara is laying down because what happens if you give it if you give your wisdom to those who are clever sneaky faithless 
what happens pratidinam every day <laughs> not just once every day dukkham jayate <sighs> sorrow is produced na atra sanchayaha there is absolutely no doubt about it okay so guys and of course i'm spreading this i'm sending this into the youtube universe and i hope you take it with the spirit of be a shanta be a guru bhakta be a satyavadi this means a speaker of truth have some devotion in this art not to me not to you know any even any person but to the art of jyotish itself and practice it why to bring goodness in the world if you do that you will have fulfilled parashara's aims if not then perhaps you will be inviting this dukkham into your life and into the lives of your clients so let's have the right orientation okay so um let's stop here this is part one of chapter one uh i know well you know what let's keep going come on we can do this what i'm going to do is go a little bit faster here um um so yeah let's keep going here and i'm just gonna i'm gonna skip over a few of these eko avyaktatmako vishnur anadi praburishvaraha shuddha sattva shuddha sattva jagat swami nirguna strigunam vitaha so vishnu although being endowed with all of the gunas is nirguna he is the lord of the universe the shuddhatma uh pure soul prabhu the lord uh the endless beginningless vishnu is the lord of the universe so parashara is a bhakta a worshiper of vishnu and this shows especially later on with the fact that he gives a lot of vishnu upayas upayas are remedial measures that are um um vishnu oriented in fact mr k n rao uh the astro great astrologer and author from india one of his recommendations to all jyotishis who practice earnestly is to do the vishnu sahasranama sahasranama stotra every day do this as your daily practice because you invoke the energy of parashara you invoke the lineage of parashara and his belief that vishnu is the supreme now what if you're a christian or muslim well then invoke the names of god in your tradition okay and so he he goes on to say here he goes on the he keeps describing vishnu sansara karaka he's the creator of samsara that's kind of not a nice title samsara is the the manifest universe of constant change she, he's pratapavan he is pratapavan could mean the punisher he's brilliant with light and heat but also like the sun it's a it's an epithet of the sun shriman nimitatma the creator the author of this world so we're going to skip through some of these because it it talks about sankhya yoga it talks about uh the philosophy of the creation of the universe uh and vishnu as the lord and then sattva rajas tamas um i want to we're going to skip on that and um go to this verse here the last verse and and we'll end with this because this verse is just phenomenal so let's let's take a read here sarveshu chaiva jeeveshu paramatma virajate sarvam hi tadidam brahman stitam hi paramatmani wow this is pure vedanta <laughs> because he he switches from one philosophy sankhya philosophy to something to non-dual philosophy why because he said sarveshu jeeveshu in all beings paramatma virajate 
the Paramatma, the great soul, shines. Sarvam hi tadidam, that great soul is everything. It is Brahman, it is, but it is stitam hi paramatmani. It is situated in all beings, in all beings are situated in it. This is the great Vedantic statement that you are God and God is you. There is nothing about original sin. There is nothing about, you know, you being anything less than pure consciousness. So, how is it translated? The Lord is in all beings and the entire universe is in him. That's it. Then, um, the second, the verse 22 says, Sarveshu Cheva Jeevesu Stitam Hi Anshadvayam Kochit. So, Jeevansha Hi Adikas Tadvat Paramatma Anshakah Kila. So, all beings have Jeevamsha, which is a localized identity, and Paramamsha, which is higher consciousness. Now, some beings have, we all have Paramamsha. Be why? Because Paramatma, the great soul, lives in all of us. Okay? The Lord is in all beings, and the entire, and all beings are in Him. Beautiful. But some have a predominance of Paramatma, and some have a predominance of Jivatma, meaning self identity versus larger cosmic identity. And so, Surya the Yaha, Surya, beginning with the sun, means the sun and the planets, Grahaha, Sarve, uh, Brahma Kama Dvishada Yaha, um, I believe that's what it says. Um, some have a predominant, so the planets, yeah, 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 yeah. okay, okay, yeah. it says Brahma Kama, oh yeah, Kama Dvisha. So the planets, all of them, and Brahma, the creator, Kama Dvisha, the killer of Kama, the killer of lust. This is a name for Shiva. <laughs> I couldn't make that out for a second, but see, folks, I'm not translating this cold, okay? I am reading the translation, and then where it's perfect, I give them their dues. Where it could use a little help, that's the goal of these videos, is to give you the full as far as I'm seeing, I'm as far as I can make it out. I'm not a Sanskrit scholar, guys. This is very simple Sanskrit. Anybody with a couple of years of Sanskrit can understand this. Okay, so uh, probably there's things that you know I may be missing too, but I doubt it because this is pretty straightforward. This is not a text that's meant to be complex. It is stated very simply for people to learn astrology, which is why I'm sharing this and why I'm not doing like Kali Das or something, okay, which is extremely complicated. So basically, what is the point? <laughs> Surya Adayaha, the planets, and Brahma, then Kama Dvisha, the killer of Kama or Shiva, so Brahma, Shiva, and so forth. So the gods, Brahma, Shiva, and others. Ete Chanyecha, Bahavaha Paramatman Shakadikaha. So in those higher beings, what we call gods, as well as the planets, they have more of the cosmic identity, whereas people have more of the localized identity. Because why my name is Simon. I live in the United States. I have a body. I'm six foot four. This is my localized uh uh, uh, awareness. But he says, even within the Jivatma, there is Paramatma. Even within my localized awareness, the great soul, Paramatma, the non local, lives within you. This is the great statement of Parashara, authoritatively said and stated to show you that all beings have access to divinity. And the process of Jyotisha is to understand how the planets show us 
uh, how they show us how we can find that divinity in us through the karmas, through clearing the karmas and the, uh, the obstacles and the blessings in our lives. Okay, that is the end of chapter one. I'll give you a preview of chapter two where Maitreya says, well, hold on. There were some great human beings born like Krishna and Rama. Are they also localized? <laughs> so we will get to that in the next video. Thank you for sticking with me. Thank you for um, putting up with this. And I hopeful, hopefully this was useful to you. If you have any questions, put them in the thing below. And we'll see you in the next one. Namaste.